Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's by user EffectiveAd7975. Am I the a-hole for saying it's not all about my sister-in-law on her wedding day? Okay, so I, female 19, have an older brother, Mark, male 25. Mark has always been my favorite sibling. We were very close growing up together and he's practically my best friend. Now, Mark was engaged to my now sister-in-law Emma, female 23. I've never really ever had a problem with Emma. Whenever she comes over, we make small talk, we're polite, and we both like each other as acquaintances. So I wasn't all that butthurt when she didn't invite me to be a bridesmaid in the wedding because if I were getting married, I wouldn't have made her a bridesmaid either. But the problem started when my brother asked me to be one of his groom's women. Emma was totally against it, arguing it's untraditional and I'll stick out, but my brother said that I was a very important part of his life and he wanted to honor that. Mark also brought up that he wanted me to do a speech at his wedding like maid of honors do for the bride, and Emma also had a hissy fit about that. She told us that with my speech and her maid of honors speech, guests would think our dinner would be boring or too drawn out. Mark stood his ground and said, if you get your party to make speeches, I want something I love to make one on my behalf. Emma eventually did drop it, but she'd still bring it up once in a while to complain. The day of the wedding rolls around and I wore a black high cut dress to fit with the groomsmen and stood by my brother's side of the altar when they got married. Then dinner came, we ate, and after we finished eating, Emma's maid of honor did this great big long speech about how Emma was the greatest person on earth and just childhood stories about them. Mind you, my brother was mentioned in the speech maybe once. After Emma's maid of honor finished, it was my turn and I congratulated Mark and Emma on their happy marriage and wished them luck before I went into a couple of stories about Mark. Some included Emma. The wedding goes on, everything seems fine, until the next day when Emma asks me to talk. I'm kinda confused cause I thought they already left for their honeymoon, but apparently they didn't leave until Tuesday, besides the point. So Emma invited me over, Mark was still sleeping, and she was really nice at first and was making small talk with me before she finally got to the point and told me that my wedding speech embarrassed her and she felt like I took away from her big day. I was really confused after that because my speech was nothing but blowing sunshine up her ass, so I asked her to explain what I did. She told me that it looked like I was trying to upstage her with all my makeup and my dark colored dress that took away from her spotlight. Then she explained to me that my speech was just all about me and my brother, not true, and she felt left out in a huge inside joke. I apologized about the fact that she felt left out, but told her that I felt the same with her and her maid of honor and that she literally never mentioned my brother. Emma defended herself saying that it was her big day and she had a right to make it all about her. To which I corrected her by saying, it's not all about you, my brother also got married yesterday, get over yourself. Emma looked red like a tomato when she yelled at me saying I was in love with my brother and that I ruined her one special day because I just couldn't get over myself. After she had a legit breakdown in her living room, I just got my car keys and left because no way I was dealing with that at 10 in the morning. I went home, I thought about the whole situation, then I took a nap and woke up with 10 plus missed calls from Emma and Mark. Emma left a couple of voice messages saying that Mark also agreed I crossed a line and wants an apology or else they cut off all contact. I didn't really think I did anything wrong, but maybe I was? I don't know. What do you all think? No, OP, because you were absolutely right. It wasn't just her wedding. It was both of their weddings and you were there for the groom, not her. Sounds to me like somebody has centerpiece syndrome. It's all about her, her spotlight, you upstaging her. If off, Emma, it was Mark's day too. And it's a good thing you stood up for your brother, OP, because I'm guessing this is just the beginning of everything being about Emma. 
OP, if I was in your shoes, I wouldn't engage with Emma at all. I would definitely not apologize to her and I would ask to speak to Mark alone. Because I'd really want to know if he is willing to cut off all contact unless you are forced to apologize. Now, I'm sure he doesn't know about this and I'm also sure that when he does, he's not gonna go for divorce from Emma. But he at least should be aware of the type of crap that Emma's gonna start pulling and he might want to have a serious conversation with her about it. And what do you guys think? What would you do if you were in OP shoes? Let me know in the comments section and now let's go check out the community comments. Catmo Catmo says, not the a-hole. Well, Emma really is a little ray of pitch black, isn't she? For starters, don't believe a word she says. If, and I mean if, your brother does indeed side with her, it's because she fed him a load of crap. First step, do not engage with her further, period. Save any communication with her in case she starts incriminating herself. Second step, reach out to your brother. Tell him you want to speak with him, preferably in person if it's possible or via phone. But you need it to be private, no Emma eavesdropping. Third step, tell him facts. Tell him everything that happened, lay out all the facts first and then get into feelings. Going through the facts first generally makes it easier for him to take it all in and easier for you to recount the conversation as thoroughly as possible. Fourth, depending on how the conversation goes, which it sounds like he's had your back from day one and has witnessed her volatile behavior, I would tell him that you prefer to have limited contact with her. She obviously does not like you, e.g. is jealous of you, and is incapable of having a civil conversation with you. He needs to rein her in. It's not your job to make amends with her as you did nothing wrong. You have had the same discussion with her countless times. This really is an issue between him and her. Her issues are with him and his relationship with you, but she's taking it out on you, which isn't fair. She's his responsibility, not yours. We both know her jealousy towards you is unfounded and unhinged, but it really doesn't matter. Let him know all the things you've told us here. Hell, send him the link, but stress he needs to read it in private without extra eyeballs around. Don't put much weight on her argument. You're in the clear. You did nothing wrong. This is an Emma problem, which is now a your brother problem, not a you problem. Give him all the information, let him know how you feel and that you support him and let him do the rest. And take his lead on this one. He seems like a stand-up dude. Not sure why he's with her, but whatever floats his boat, I suppose. Do not blow more sunshine up her ass. She doesn't deserve it. Mobile Prune 3207 says, not the a-hole. I suggest to tell Mark your version of the conversation before she gets too much in his head. The fact that Mark isn't contacting you himself is telling. And Maggers Rose says, Emma is lying. She gave Mark some twisted and convoluted version of the conversation you two had the day after and he's feeling trapped and obligated to side with his new wife. Get time alone when they return to speak to your brother. Emma is the one that's jealous and she's trying to build a barrier and destroy your relationship with your brother, not the a-hole. Alright, so the overall consensus is OP is not the a-hole, Emma sucks and OP needs to talk to her brother alone. Now, OP did not reply to any comments or give us an edit, so we move on straight to the update to see how this story ends. Okay, so the whole situation was resolved two days ago, but I literally don't know how to use Reddit, so I had no clue how I was supposed to update a post. I still don't know if I'm doing it correctly, so my bad if this is wrong. Anyway, my brother called me and asked me why I told Emma that the whole wedding had nothing to do with her. He then asked me if I felt insecure because I had just gotten out of a long-term relationship. I was kind of offended, cause like, what the F does my ex-boyfriend have to do with any of this? But I told Mark that we should sit down and talk about what happened without Emma around, and he was kind of skeptical, but he agreed. So we sat down for coffee and I explained that Emma was offended that my speech didn't mention her that much and she felt left out at the dinner. Then I explained that she told me that the wedding was her day so it should have been about her and when I corrected her on his behalf she went absolutely ballistic on me. Mark told me that Emma said that when she invited me over I immediately went on the offensive and that I felt threatened by their marriage. 
Emma then tried to stick up for me by saying that maybe I was just sad about my ex and I used her as an outlet. I quickly told Mark that I had never once given my ex a positive thought since we broke up and that I was happy for him and I was sorry that Emma perceived it that way but that's not at all what happened. So Mark decided to call Emma and asked her to meet us at the coffee place where we all sat down and talked. Emma burst out crying in the middle of the coffee place and started apologizing for the misunderstanding and said that she just felt really insecure at her own wedding. She said that she heard multiple people commenting on how breathtaking I was and she just felt really belittled compared to me. Well, all of this sounds like an Emma problem. Then, at my speech, when I brought up memories that I had with my brother and not her, she felt inadequate and that she'd never match up to me. She said she knew it was stupid, but she just felt like she was constantly competing with me and the dam just broke. I thought some of it was crocodile tears, but I also knew some of it was sincere. I told her that Mark really did love her and that she shouldn't feel the need to compete with me because I understood and respected their relationship. Emma also reached out to me over text to apologize again and she seems sincere. And that's all that happened. Thanks for hearing me out and helping. Mm, OP, I don't buy a single tear shed out of Emma's eyes. She's just acting this way because she got called out. She completely lied to your brother about what actually happened to get him on her side and get angry with you. Tried to play herself as the hero for inventing something with your ex-boyfriend and now that she's facing the music, all tears and how inadequate she feels because you outshined her at her. Oh, you know what? A load of crap that I couldn't really care less about. OP, honestly, if I was in your shoes, I wouldn't change anything about the relationship with your brother. I would just be very weary of Emma, everything she says and everything she does. And I would take it all with a full sack of salt. So on that note, here's wishing you the best in the future, OP, and be careful with Emma. Take care and thank you for sharing. And now, let's move on to the next post that also has an update. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user ActualAssignment94. My 24 female boyfriend, 25 male, is making me pay for AirPods. Me and my boyfriend have been together for 6 years and since being with him, I've developed an irrational fear of losing things that belong to him because of how he reacts. Basically, he got a set of AirPods for free when buying an Apple Watch and I haven't been able to find the AirPods for a couple of days now. They're usually on our coffee table or kitchen counter and they've been missing two days now. He said that if I'm unable to find them, then I'm going to have to give him the amount of money they were worth. He starts raising his voice calling me irresponsible and a bunch of other unpleasant things, even though he got them for free. Basically, I'm asking if this is fair. I don't really think it is because he didn't pay a cent for them. And to top it off, he broke my headphones he bought me for Christmas earlier in the spring. He said he would buy me new ones and then said, never mind, you can have the AirPods. Only to turn around now saying, no, never mind, you can't have the AirPods because he thinks I lost them. Well, OP, off of what you're saying, no, I don't think it's fair for many reasons. First of all, he gave you headphones for Christmas, he broke them, and he replaced them with the AirPods that he got for free for buying a watch. Now, apparently, you've misplaced these AirPods, and now they're magically back to being his, and you need to pay for them. Now, let's imagine that he lent you the AirPods and you do need to replace them. He doesn't want the AirPods, he wants money. Something that he didn't use to get them because he got them for free. So if anything, and this still wouldn't be fair, you'd need to give him AirPods and you can buy them secondhand from eBay or something. But regardless of all speculation, OP, in my opinion, this whole scenario is not fair. Now, the other thing that's kind of concerning is that when he gets upset about things, he raises his voice, he calls you unpleasant things, that's no way to treat somebody you love. I don't want to jump on the breakup train, but I would definitely put him in review. And what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section and now let's check out the community comments. 
Automator 3000 says, did you lose them or did he lose them? Because that part is unclear. My reading of this says he lost them and is blaming you, which is a super crappy thing to do. And OP responds, I'm not a fan of them because they give me headaches, but we both share them. Neither of us can remember who used them last and he automatically suspected I did and lost them. Panic Suchud says, so he broke the headphones and then gave you the airpods instead of replacing the headphones. Then it doesn't matter if you lost the airpods because they were yours. It's your choice whether to get a new pair or not. If the airpods were his and you were using them and lost them, then it'd make sense for you to replace them. But he also owes you a pair of headphones. Your boyfriend sounds like a nay-hole, but that being said, if he's holding you accountable for paying for the AirPods, then you need to hold him equally accountable for buying you replacement headphones. The fact that you've been together 6 years sounds like this would be exhausting. And Dopey responds, I've only just started noticing the way he is and that it's definitely not right. I told him that he said I can have the AirPods as replacement and he said because I lost them it doesn't matter anymore, it cancels it out? Not even sure what that means. And Cosmonautin VT says, Your boyfriend is being a nahul about this. Regardless of what the circumstances are, it's not even clear to me that you lost them. Earbuds are an exceptionally easy thing to lose. I misplace and have to search for my earbuds and or the case on a monthly basis it seems like sometimes. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. The batteries will go to crap one day anyway and they will need to be replaced. This is not something that is worth getting worked up over and you can learn a lot by how a person reacts to that. Alright, so the community agrees that the boyfriend is kind of a crappy guy because, you know, this whole thing isn't fair and it's still kind of in the grey about who lost them, not even OP knows yet. And apparently this whole thing has given OP a new perspective on which she's looking at her boyfriend. So how about we move on to the update to see how this story ends. I found the AirPods yesterday afternoon in my fanny pack that I bring with me on runs or walks. I checked my fanny pack multiple times because that was the only logical place I thought they could be. Like I completely emptied it and they were not there. Yesterday my boyfriend started hounding me about it again so I started to look for them again. Felt like I was going crazy, so I checked my fanny pack once more and there they were. This made me feel even crazier because I know for a fact they were not there 5 days ago. I asked my boyfriend if he put them there for some twisted reason, he denied it and got upset I even accused him of that. I was upset because it didn't make sense to me. So I asked him if he still would have made me pay for them if I didn't find them because he yelled at me for days about it. He then started to act all nice saying, No, of course not. I just don't want you to lose anything that has that much value. I asked him finally, So for the future, these AirPods you gifted them to me, so I don't want to hear about them being yours again. He agreed and said, Fine. Fast forward to today. He was using something of mine and I made a little comment about the AirPods. He didn't like that and then said they're his AirPods again. So he's going back on his word constantly and he gets unrealistically angry very fast. Like he snaps within a matter of seconds to his whole face turning red. I don't understand it and it's been too long for this for me. It's taken a toll. I'd like to have some sort of explanation as to why someone can be like this, but regardless, I plan on ending it. My issue is that I've tried leaving him multiple times and each time it leads to a very heated, very aggressive argument. We have two dogs together so that just complicates it even more. He's threatened to sue me if I take the dogs and he's threatened to sue me for all my money and belongings because we are considered common law. Anyway, I just need to come up with a final plan to finally end this. Well, Opie, it doesn't sound like a very safe place to be while you're figuring out your exit plan. So maybe tell him that this whole airport thing just has you thinking that you need some space and to go to your parents' house and then just move out and end it. You don't need his permission to end the relationship. The only thing I think you might need help with is figuring out your dog situation. So on that note, here's wishing you the best OP. Please take care and thank you for sharing. And now let's finish this video with a quick mood booster post. This post is from the subreddit Petty Revenge and it's by user itsfish20. 
landscaper kept blocking my driveway, so now he has to walk over a block from his truck. My neighbor directly across the street has his yard serviced every Wednesday morning around 7.30, right at the time I'm leaving to drop off my kid at daycare and drive to work. I have had to get out of my car, go find the guy in the yard across the street and have him move his truck so I can leave now at least four times since April. I decided that I was done with this dance and decided to park my wife's car on the street where the landscaper parks his truck on Tuesday nights, so come Wednesday morning he wouldn't be able to block my driveway. We also live on a street that you can only park on one side and the police here ticket very quickly if they see you are parked on the wrong side. I also have a fire hydrant in front of my house and my neighbor to the north of me parks his truck on the street. So with all that, the landscaper and his big ass truck and trailer now need to park over a block away and bring all his equipment with him on multiple trips. Well OP, that definitely is petty and I'm guessing he should have gotten the hint after the first time he had to go get him. I guess he didn't. Thanks for sharing OP. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.